students, it's Pastor Kendall again, and I have a special treat for you, okay? So what I want you to do, follow the instructions. This is back to school weekend. And so what I want you to do is follow us on social media on Student Life OCC on Instagram, okay? Student Life OCC on Instagram. But here's the cool thing about it. We have some giveaways. And so if you would, just drop us a direct message and just give us your first and last name and the best contact information for you, okay? So you don't want to miss out on this. We have some cool things to give away. I heard we have some Nike gift cards, but I ain't going to say too much else. But just make sure you go and follow us on Instagram and make sure you go and drop the direct message to us, okay? Student Life OCC. God bless. Have a good uh, school year. All right? Peace Double. out. Full of change. Some good. Some not so good. And some complicated. But one thing is constant. One thing never changes. Students, what's going on? It's Pastor Kendall again, and I'm so excited to be with you again. And so listen here. We are in this series talking about even if, and we've been talking about a lot of different changes, changes for the good, changes for the bad, changes that make you feel sad, changes that make you feel frustrated, whatever the change may be. We even talked about how God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, no matter what change we go through. But there's a change that I want to talk about today, and this is change makes us stronger. Say that with me. So change makes us stronger. And yes, I'm talking about physically, but also spiritually and even emotionally, even mentally change makes us stronger so check this story out so I was in high school my sophomore year in high school right and I was this like skinny skinny little kid and I the truth of the matter is I'm talking about football here but I was this skinny kid like a hundred and let's say 10 pounds like I wasn't big at all and people used to actually call me like crazy names like knobby knees and they used to call me slinky because my legs was long but they was real skinny like make real a lot of different fun of me but anyway so we're not going to talk about the locker room jokes, but this is basically how I felt. I felt like this skinny kid that was like trying out for the football team and I didn't know if I was going to make it. And I, I, truth of the matter is I had a lot of insecurities about how I felt about myself. And I remember talking to my friend and he's like this buff dude. And I was like, hey, man, how do I get your size? Like, how do I get there? How, what do I need to do to be stronger? And he told me, he's like, man, you got to put the work in. You have to put the work in. And I'm like, OK, but what does that really mean? Like, I get you have to put the work in, but like really spell it out for me. Like, do I have to get up early? Do I need to go to sleep later? Do I have to change my eating habits? Do, do you physically mean go to the gym? Like, what do you mean? And so this dude wrote out some workout plans and he wrote out some different eating habits. He wrote out a schedule where I had to change my sleep. He, it was so many different things, but I began to do them. So Monday morning, I would get up, I would make me a smoothie and it had protein in it. It had peanut butter in it and I would drink it. And it was like the best smoothie ever. And so I was like, oh, OK, this is great. This is absolutely amazing. I can do this all day long. Then I would meet him at the gym and we'll do some upper body workouts. And I begin to feel myself get a little bit stronger as certain Mondays went by. And then Tuesday, we would get up, we would do the same thing, but we would work on our core. Wednesday came, we would do leg day. Thursday came, we would run on the track. And so it was every day it was something different but we would get up every single day and we would put the work in he had me eating salads he had me eating fruit y'all even to this day I'm getting ready to be 30 I hate salad and I, I don't advise it because salad is good for you but I don't like it because I ate it so much in high school right and so even into college I had to change my eating habits because of what I did in high school so it was just a habit anyway so here we are and I'm getting ready to start the game. My sophomore year, I made the varsity team and I'm getting ready to start the game. And I'm not feeling insecure like I did at the beginning of the summer. I didn't feel the insecurity of maybe you're not big enough. Maybe you're not strong enough. Maybe you don't know uh, um, of how to do a real bench press. Maybe you don't know how to really have good form when you run. I, I didn't have any of those insecurities. Why? Because I put the work in and at a repetition, I begin to have a little confidence. 
And so I begin to see the change work for me for the better. But change for all of us can be different. And some change for you may feel frustrating of why do I have to go through this change? What is this change going to benefit me? And that's what I thought when I was a sophomore. I was like, what is, what is this going to benefit me? I'm frustrated because I'm skinny. I'm frustrated because people make fun of me. I, I'm frustrated for, for so many other different reasons. And maybe you feel that way of whatever change that you're going through right now, that change is just frustrating you. Why do my parents have to fight when I come home? Why do my friends have to act differently, differently than me? Why do I have to be peer pressured into doing things that I don't want to do? Like change comes from different angles and it makes us feel frustrated. And I completely understand what you are saying when you say I am frustrated with the changes that are happening in my life. Maybe the change that you went through when you had to go to virtual school instead of actually doing in person. So that's a huge change. And I'm sure you were frustrated. I'm sure you were frustrated with having to miss games last year or whatever the changes were. I get that change makes us frustrated, but that frustration can make us stronger if we learn to push through in that moment and not to give up in that moment. Maybe there's another change. Maybe there's a change that is just out of your control. Maybe it makes things just feel out of control. Like at some point when I was doing all those different workouts, I felt like, dude, I can't even control my sleep anymore because as soon as I get laid down to go to bed, it seems like my alarm clock goes off and now it's time to do another workout. Or trust me, there were times where I didn't even want to eat a snack because he had me eating every two hours. I was like, I can't even control my own life. But the truth of the matter is, if I didn't put in the work then, I wouldn't have been able to benefit and become stronger when the season started. So I get some of the changes in your life. You may feel out of control. You may feel like I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know how to get through this. I don't know why this is happening. It's just out of my control. So whether you're frustrated, whether you're out of control, I want to encourage you that change is going to make you stronger. And so there were some people in the Bible that uh, I want to talk to you about. There's a guy in the Bible by the name of James. And maybe you know him or maybe you don't. But did you know this? He was actually Jesus' brother. Can you imagine growing up with Jesus as your brother? Like, the same guy that was in the temple talking to the, the wise men. Like, can you imagine that being like your brother? Like you're actually sharing a room with this guy and he's telling you like, you know, I'm the son of God, right? Like, you know, that's who I am. But like James was Jesus' brother, but he really didn't believe that he was the son of God. Can you imagine James being Jesus' brother and Jesus out there walking on water? And James like, bro, what are you doing? Like, Jesus. Can you imagine James being Jesus' brother and Jesus turning water into wine? Like it's so many different things, but that's who James was. But he didn't believe that Jesus was a son of God until he died and he came back. Right. So once he died and he returned, then James was like, oh, surely he is the son of God. And so what he did is he started a movement with the early followers of Christ. And so when he started this movement, what he was maybe aware of or maybe he wasn't aware of is that these people will be threatened. Their lives will be threatened. They will go through a lot of different changes where their families were broken up, where friends maybe didn't like them, where people were actually threatening to kill them. People were actually threatening their lives because they chose to follow Christ. And it all was because James was like, hey, man, there's a guy that I need you guys to believe in. And he started this movement. Right. But James, he encouraged them and he told them, even though you're going through this change, this change is going to make you stronger. So he wrote them some letters. And what I want you to do is read one of the letters with me, just a portion of it. And it's in James chapter one, verses two through four. OK, so James chapter one, verses two through four, it says, consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let's just read that one more time. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. What does that mean? You mean that I'm supposed to be happy when bad things happen to me? Is that what you're saying to me, James? Remember, these people were being persecuted for following Christ. I don't know what change you're going through in your life, but I promise you it's not as bad as what these people were going through in their life. Right. So they were actually going through so many different things. And so it tells them, consider it all joy. He's not saying be joyful when bad things happen. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying you can find joy in the fact that when these things happen to you, it's making you stronger. How is it making you stronger? Because the testing of your faith produces endurance. 
I don't know how many athletes we have out there, and maybe you're not an athlete, but I just want to walk through this so that you can actually see what endurance looks like or what testing looks like, right? So here we have, I have a resistance band. This is the lower version of a resistance band, right? So it's the weakest one. And I can kind of pull it apart and very easily, right? Very easily. This may symbolize a change that happens in your life. Maybe it's something small. Maybe you thought you were going to have one school schedule and you actually had to have a different school schedule so you didn't get to have the classes you wanted with your friends. That's what this change looks like. And yeah, you have to go through it, but it's not really too hard. But you just kind of have to trust and know that everything is going to be all right. Or maybe it's something small as far as I got to have a tough conversation with my friends. We're still friends, but I got to trust that God is going to help me with that conversation. Yeah. Boom. That's what this looks like. And so this this may not be hard for you because why? Your faith has produced endurance. And so you can do this all day long, all day long. But maybe there's another change. Maybe there's another change of this is a little bit bigger problem. Maybe there's a problem at home that you're not really sure of. And it's making you frustrated. It's making you irritated. It's making you insecure. It's making you question so many things that's going on in your life. And so this is the second level of the resistance band where you kind of have to pull a little bit more and pull a little bit harder. And you have to really put the work in and you have to really trust God to get through it. And you have to really know that everything is going to be OK. And you have to read your word and you have to encourage people around you. Like it may be really tough, but it's because that you were able to go through this change that this change doesn't take you out. But because you got stronger in this change, maybe there's another change that happens. And maybe this change is maybe someone passes away in your family that you were close to. Or maybe something traumatic happens to you where your life is changed forever. But it's because you were able to go through this change and because you were able to go through this change, this change doesn't take you out. Yes, it's harder. Yes, you got to keep praying. Yes, you have to keep trusting. Yes, you have to keep going. But just know that if you don't give up, this change, too, will not take you out. Because the word also tells us here in verse three, knowing that the testing of your faith, the testing, knowing that when you go through tests and you go through trials, it is producing endurance and endurance. You can endure. You can get through. You can push through to it. Number four says, let this endurance have its perfect result, a perfect result so that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Here's another example of what this verse may look like. I love watching this show and it's called Forged in Fire, right? And what they would do is they have like old school, like silversmith or bladesmith. Back in the day, what they would do, they would, um, they forged these different knives or different weapons or whatever it was. And so they would take the metal and they would put it in this little tin or this little pot or whatever you want to call it. And they would heat up that pot and they would heat it up to such a level that that metal begins to kind of just take in that heat and it begins to change colors. And as it begins to change colors, you can see the impurities of the metal begin to float to the top. And as it floated to the top, they were able to scrape off all the different um, impurities of the metal. And they begin to do this same process over and over and over. And remember, this is like the testing that's going on in your life where the impurities kind of float to the top because you're going through a tough place. But God can scrape off those impurities and you can keep on going. That's kind of what your life looks like. Right. But they did this process over and over and over. And they never tried to actually forge it into a weapon or never actually tried to forge it into a knife until they were able to see their reflection in the metal. Once they were able to see their reflection in the metal, they knew that the metal was good enough. It was hot enough. It was strong enough to understand it's able to be used. And maybe that's the same thing in your life. That the word tells us that knowing that the testing of our faith produces endurance and let this endurance have its perfect result. When you go through changes, can God look down on you, scrape off the impurities over and over until he sees his reflection, until he sees himself in your situation, till he sees himself with your schoolwork, with your family, with your friends, with your conversations. Can he look down and see the impurities being scraped off and know that you're ready to be used? That's exactly what this looks like. It says all over again, let the endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. 
So change is frustrating. Change may make us feel like sometimes life is out of control. But even if that's the case, you can be confident that change will make you stronger. No matter what you're facing today, no matter if you don't know if you're going to get out of it, I want to encourage you. Keep going. Don't quit. Put the work in. Fight as hard as you can and know that God is on your side. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you. God, thank you that there is changes that come in our life. And God, thank you that these changes don't take us out, but they actually make us stronger. Thank you that these changes may make us feel out of control or frustrated, or maybe we don't understand the changes, but we do know one thing, God, that you are there with us. And because you're there with us, God, these changes make us stronger in our faith in you. So God, we thank you. We love you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, y'all have a good one. See you guys next week.